you talk about understanding the, the history of the traffic source. Why, why do you think it's important to understand the history of the various traffic sources? Yes. Um, so if you had asked Russell this like seven years ago, my answer would have been completely different. Because back seven years ago, my goal was like, what's the loophole? Like, how are we going like, <laughs> to like get like, what's the backdoor access thing to get all the traffic? You know, like if I can figure out. So like we used to study Google and stuff because it's like, what are the algorithms? How do we and how do we beat the system? And for years we would do that. And it was, it was like, th- there were pros and cons. Cause like we figured out, we spend like six months doing all the stuff and we get ranked back on page number one and like a bunch of money's coming in. Like, ah, and then like it was shifting and we lose it. Mm-hmm. But it was always like this thing where we were trying to find the loophole and exploit it. Um, the problem is like when you're doing that, you're always kind of, it's just like, it's not a long-term right. business. So when we launched click funnels, um, I remember talking to my team and I was like, let's do this differently. Like, let's don't try to like figure out the loophole. Instead, let's, let's really get aligned with what the networks want. Cause if we can align with them and give them what they want, then they'll, they'll reward us, mm-hmm. which is a different mindset than I ever had. Cause I think most entrepreneurs were like, how do we hack the system? And mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'm going to try to like, how do I, how do I bow down to the powers that be and like, and do it the way, the way they want. And so for, for me, I like going to the thing and like understanding the history of like, what did they did and why have they did it and why have they done it? Cause then if I see where they're, where they're going, what they're trying to do, and I can see what they're trying to go to, and say, like, okay, this is what they're rewarding people for right now. It's not, mm-hmm. not the loophole, but this is what they want to create. So it's like, now I know, understand what they want me to create. Let me go and create a bunch of those things. I think that one of the first times I ever, I ever like, had the success was when Google first launched uh, Google Hangouts. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they wanted people publishing on Google Hangouts or whatever. So I was like, okay. So I started publishing daily on Google Hangouts. And man, any keyword I would do a Google Hangout about, the next day, or within like hours, I was on page one for that. And I was like... <laughs> So I was doing Google Hangouts like four times a day and every keyword phrase I could think of. And like, and they were rewarding me in a group and, um, and it was, it was amazing. And, um, and that was the thing, right? Facebook was the same thing. When Facebook live came out, they were rewarding people like crazy because they wanted to get everyone to move off of Periscope and come over to them. Right. We started publishing and they rewarded us. So it's like, figuring out like, where, like, where are they going? What do they, they want you to do? And then do that. And they'll just reward you, um, as you do it along the way. And so, um, that's kind of the mindset shift. And so each of these chapters, like the networks I do show, I kind of try to show that the mm. history and then how understanding this history gives us a glimpse of where they, we should be going. But it also helps you understand that like, again, my, my biggest fear of writing this book was what happens if next week the government shuts down Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook <laughs> is no longer there or whatever, who knows? Yeah, yeah. I don't want the book to be, to be irrelevant. And so it's like, when you understand the principles, it's like, okay, what's the next platform that's coming out? If it's TikTok or Twitch or Hmm. some new system that all of us are going to make next weekend that comes out, you know, like how do you, how do you understand these things so you can apply it to whatever, whatever the platform is at the time? Yeah. And that was actually my bigger, uh, that was the very first thing I thought about when I saw traffic secrets and, you know, got it in the mail. I was like, uh Oh, is it going to have a bunch of screenshots of like Facebook or Google platforms? I'm like, this is going to be over in like a month. <laughs> yeah. You're so quick, Russell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good luck with that. But it doesn't. And that's the beautiful thing. So, um, but yeah, I love it because I mean, like in Facebook right now, groups are really big and <clears throat> engagement. They ran Super Bowl commercials promoting groups. Right. That's great. Right. Yeah. That shows how much Google wants you to be doing groups right now. So it's like, okay, if they're going to buy Super Bowl ads to get people in groups, that's what they want us to do. So let's go build groups right now. And you'd be crazy not to. Yeah, that's right, man. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing almost, it's almost on par with the email list right now, which is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, <laughs> doesn't take a lot of work. Um, yeah. So one of the things you bring up too, and I thought this is really cool because we, we modified this from, I think, a mutual buddy of ours, Roland Frazier and Chet Holmes, is uh, the Dream 100 strategy. We use it to get dream guests on our podcast. You were on there. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> and a whole bunch of other folks. But I like how you're using it to get your dream customers. And then, of course, you know, extend it into all these other methods. And one of the questions, common question is like, how do I start? You know, I have a business. I don't really have connections. I don't know what to do. Uh, where do I start with my traffic? And I really love what you're saying is like, get to know and really love and understand and just like obsess over your dream customers. Um, so can you get and give us just like an overview? I know it's a deep strategy, but of the dream 100 strategy from your uh, side of things. Yeah. Um, I did initially learn from Chet Holmes. Chet was a friend of mine before he passed away. And, um, yeah. and he would use the dream 100 strategy. Like what he would do for those who don't know, he would go and say, okay, here's the, like, here's the hundred clients that I want to land as like big, huge consulting clients. So he had a hundred people and he'd go aggressively market to these hundred people, you know, campaigns, what he would do. And I remember he told me that and I was like, well, I sell books and I sell software. Like I, I can't spend $500 on a campaign to get someone to buy a book. Like I'll be broke really quick. And I couldn't quite connect the dots for a little while. And then one day I realized, I was like, wait a minute. And I talked about this like, chapter one of the books, like 
who is your dream customer? Chapter two is like, where are these people congregating? Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, like, for example, say you're in health and fitness. So your dream customer is obsessed with health and fitness. Like what are the health and fitness blogs that they read? Maybe there's five blogs or 20 blogs. What are the podcasts they listen to? There's a whole bunch of podcasts. What are the Facebook groups they're part of? What are the, you start looking for all these different congregations. So that was step two. And then step three was like, okay, now, now I found like there's 300,000 people on this blog learning about health and fitness. Who is the person that owns that blog? Who's the, who's the person, if I can get them to like me and build a relationship that they could like basically give me access to the entire, you know, to hundred customers or a thousand yep. customers. Who's the person who owns, who owns the podcast? And so, um, one of the things we, we show, I think it's a page 41. Yeah, page 41 in the Travis Secrets book. For those who can see this, I know some of you guys are listening, but if you can see it, I have this little chart here. It says it has all different networks. So Facebook, uh, Instagram, podcast. So what I do is I go say, okay, who on Facebook already has my dream customer? So who's already congregating together? They've got a group or they've got a fan page or they've got something where my customers I want are already hanging out there. So I write down the names of all those people here. Then I go to Instagram. Who are all the influencers that my dream customers are already following? And I list out all as many of those as I can. Then who are the people, all the podcasters that have, have my dream customers listening to the podcast and YouTube. And I go through all these different things. And eventually I get a list of like 100 people or so, or maybe 150 or two. I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be 100 mm-hmm. exactly, yeah. but whatever it is, you have your list of, of your dream 100. And then the question is like, okay, how do I market directly to these people? Because if I can get one of those people to say yes, it, it, it's not like I made one customer. It's like if that person says yes, it could open up 500 or 1,000 customers. Like mm-hmm. A good example is when, um, when I launched my very first book, the Dotcom Secrets book, um, I didn't know any podcasters. So I went through the whole podcast directory and there's you know hundreds of, of really good mm-hmm. podcasts. So I sent every single one of them a copy of the book. And they're like, hey, here's my book. Can I be on your podcast? And within like a week, I got a call back from, I didn't know him at the time. I knew who he was, but I didn't, I didn't know him personally. It was, it was John Lee Dumas, from Entrepreneur mm-hmm. Park, Entrepreneur Fire. And JLD's like, dude, your book's awesome. I want to interview you on the podcast. And I'm like, okay. So he interviewed me on the podcast. We told some stories like this. I we told people to buy them a copy of the book. And uh, from that one that one interview, we sold over 500 copies of, of the nice. Dotcom Secrets book. So I got one yes, and I got 500 customers from it, right? And then yep. I got a whole I got probably a dozen other podcasters who had let me on the shows as well. And like, and like that strategy is really powerful because one yes opens up a thousand yeses. That's and right. so it's it's kind of how we begin. And as you get deeper in the book, like that's that's that strategy is the core to everything, right? Because the same mm. thing, like. Like, where, am I, where do I buy ads from? Well, what if I buy ads from the following of my Dream 100, right? Like, mm-hmm. JLD, I'm going to promote on the show, but maybe I can buy ads in this podcast. Maybe I can follow these people on Facebook and Instagram and show them, at, you know, and so it's like, yep. like all, all of our traffic strategies are all based off of this one core foundational concept of the Dream 100. 